So, dear uh, brothers, uh, today we're going to study uh, the question which everybody has uh, in their mind, seeing so much of uh, troubles, uh, difficulties, uh, problems uh, all around the world. See, as soon as we enter 2020, we faced, uh, you see, the COVID the situation because of which there was a uh, disaster in uh, finance, lot of, uh, you see, market uh, lost its value. There's a lot of people left their places, uh, you see, and uh, decided to go and stay in their home place. And uh, so many people daily are immigrating, migrating from one place to other place. Uh, and they're losing their father, their mother, the children. And so many children are left uh, orphaned just to... Uh, die like that only and uh, lie around the roads. Seeing all these uh, things, uh, uh, definitely a question passes uh, everybody's mind. Why? 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 Why, Lord? Why all these things? Uh? Why so many sufferings in this world? Uh? And some people, even question God saying, uh, God, uh, don't you have a uh, uh, <clears throat> Eyes, can't you see? Huh? Why are you blind? Why don't you help the mankind? Such type of questions, uh, you see, because of the sufferings, uh, people ask. Uh, and some people so get, get fed up uh, that they commit suicide by ending their life. Uh, whenever uh, a earning man in the family he dies, uh, the same question comes to the mind uh, of the children. Imagine if a only son in the family dies, uh, the family parents ask the same question, Lord, why did you take my son? Don't you have a heart? Uh, don't you have eyes? Don't you have ears? You see, if the parents uh, lose their loved ones, the same question comes to the mind. So this is the common question in the world where people are suffering. Why, 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 why? Why there is differentiation between rich and the poor? Why some people have everything and some people have nothing? Why some people have a lot of food to eat while poor people don't even have basic things in their life? Why some people have a lot of education, everything. But some people, even after a lot of uh, pain, suffering, sorrow, there is nothing in their life. Why? So, <clears throat> this is the question we're going to see today, the answer from the Bible. Dear brethren, the Bible says uh, that God has created everybody equally and we are all of his uh, family. We are one family and uh, we are all uh, his children. So then, why this differentiation in his family? In Ephesians 3.15, it says, uh, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So we are all uh, of one family. So in the family, why there is differentiation? Why some are blessed? Why are not some blessed? Why some are suffering? Why some are living happily? Imagine if we have two children in our house, will we make one child as a beggar and other child as a doctor? No. Jesus said, this one, you being evil, know how good things to give to children. Give them how much more God will be knowing it. Isn't it? So let us read that verse, Matthew 7, chapter 9 to 11, brother. Suraj, brother, can you read Matthew 7, chapter 9 to 11? Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to go how to keep good gift unto your children, how much more shall your father, which in which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Hmm? Jesus compared 
our earthly father to heavenly father if you being evil know what good things to give to your children then definitely father would be doing much better than that one then dear brethren why why god is not uh, you see blessing everybody equally why there is differentiation in his family dear brethren if you ask this question some people tell that they didn't know this is satan who is doing it god is blessing everybody god wants to bless everybody but satan the adversary the devil you see he deceives everybody he is the one who is doing all this evil in this world but yet again the question comes if uh, satan is doing all these things the almighty god the supreme powerful god he can stop it no but why is not stopping it why again the question comes uh, why so some people they simply tell oh god is only doing all these things god is only doing evil god is only doing good dear brethren does god have anything to do with evil in the bible you see what does the bible say psalm 5 chapter verse 4 read brother psalm 5 4 for thou not a god that hath pleasure in wickedness neither shall evil dwell with thee see for thou art not a god who has pleasure in wickedness god doesn't take pleasure in wickedness neither does evil dwell with him so it goes god has got nothing to do with evil then again the same question comes why 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 you know siddharth who became gautam buddha he had the same question he was nurtured very very comfortably and a luxurious life inside the palace but one day when his father was away he went out to see his uh, citizens of the this kingdom how they are living each and every house event there was only sickness <laughs> only sorrow pain <clears throat> then <clears throat> when he returned to the palace <clears throat> he questioned his father father why the citizens of our kingdom are suffering like this his father could not answer his question he told please go and get a grain of rice from the house from where there is no tears we went and begged every house uh, none could give him a grain because every house had tears so ultimately when his question was not answered he left all the family life and all and uh, when went and sat below a tree became buddha <clears throat> but uh, what was the use of it did he uh, get the answer to his question no he did not get it uh. so many people similarly once they don't get the answer they come to the conclusion that all the civil is done by huh devil <clears throat> they believe that there is no god at all but uh, seeing the wonderful creation of god can we tell that there is no god no dear brethren the wonderful creation of god itself is a proof that there is god then what is the answer for this one God originally created man in His own image. Genesis one twenty six tells, "Let us make man in our own image." Own image means what? Not that God created a man as God was. God is a spirit being. He doesn't have a fleshly body as we have. Jesus said, "No, John four twenty four. God is a spirit, and he that worships Him should worship in spirit and truth." So. god is having a spiritual body but man is having a fleshly body then what is the meaning of likeness in image of god that means all the qualities the character which god has is uh, in man the main and the primary quality is that god made man as a free moral will agent he did not create him as a robot so they can only do things what god tells no god gave him a liberty the choice if he wants to do good he can do good if he doesn't want to do good he can uh, reject it uh, that choice god gave to man and after creating man in such a image full full liberty god placed him in the garden of eden and told you see ha uh, you can eat uh, and enjoy completely in garden of eden and gave him a companion he also 
how was he created uh, he was created through cloning process through adam so all the creation of god was perfect that's what deuteronomy 32:4 says read brother deuteronomy 32:4 he is the rock his work is perfect for all his ways are judgment a go a god of truth and without iniquity just as right is he ah god of truth all his work is perfect so where first man can when he was created is perfect even lucifer when he was created was perfect many people think that lucifer is like this Ah, uh, like a dragon, red or black in color, having uh, two horns on the head, four canine teeth, sharp nails, a tail, and if he opens his mouth, only fire is coming. You see, sharp and uh, piercing, fiery eyes. Dear brethren, this is all our imagination. The Bible doesn't say so. Bible says that Satan is created, Lucifer was created, wonderful and beautiful. Read Ezekiel twenty-eight twelve. Ezekiel twenty-eight twelve. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou seals, sealest of the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. See, God tells uh, the Lord, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. God is telling about whom? It says it's about the king of Tyrus. But everybody thinks that it's the king of Tyrus. No. If we read that verse, continue. It says he was in Garden of Eden. Read thirteen, brother. Verse thirteen and fourteen, brother. Please. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl. The onyx and the jasper. Okay, the thank you, brother. Okay, okay. One by one, we'll go. So it says, "Thou hast been in the Garden of Eden." Now, when was King of Tyrus in the Garden of Eden? Only Adam and Eve was in Garden of Eden. But this verse is speaking about whom? Read verse fourteen, brother. You are reading from the screen or from the Bible, brother? From the screen. Screen. Okay. okay. Then continue. Please continue. Hmm. The jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbon coal and gold, the workmanship of the tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in the in the day that thou was was created. Thou the anointed cherub that covered. Ah, okay, brother. It says he was a anointed cherub that covered. Now, King of Tyrus is a cherub. Is he an angel? Was he in Garden of Eden? No. So, who is this angel? Who was in Garden of Eden? Was created perfect in beauty and wisdom. That is speaking about Lucifer. Therefore, Lucifer was created so beautiful. Bible says, yeah, the Satan will transform like an angel of light. It seems. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen. You see, if Satan comes and stands before us, we'll fall prostrate before him. You see, thinking that he is God, uh, dear brethren, Lucifer. That word Lucifer actually in the Bible means morning star. You see, read Isaiah fourteen twelve, brother. Read the first verse. Uh. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Mm. Art thou cut down to the ground with this weakened? Mm -hmm. The nations. Mm. See, he says, How are the fallen from you know, Lucifer? So, Lucifer, son of morning. You see, the word Lucifer itself means morning star. Pan Jupiter is called as morning star because early in the morning is shines as a star. So, what is the meaning of this one? If you see, this is early creation of God. You know, there is one more morning star in the Bible. Can you guess, brother, who is the one more morning star in the Bible, brother? Do you have any idea? Yeah, it's Jesus Christ. Very good. Jesus Christ. Read 22.16. Revelation 22.16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, 
the bride and the morning star. Ah, you see, the bright morning star. So, there are two morning stars. Jesus is also morning star. So, Lucifer is also morning star. Then, both uh, should have been together sometime, no? Where they together? Huh? Where they together? Suraj Uttar. Sometime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Job 38.6, Uttar. Job 38.6. Whereupon are the foundation thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the Son of God shouted for joy. Uh -huh. The morning stars, not star, stars, that means two. So we sang together, it seems to be brother. And therefore, you see, uh, Lucifer was created perfect only. You see, and they were sent uh, to Garden of Eden to protect mankind. You see, a covering cherub, a protecting angel, a guardian angel. You see, after creating man, God had given him the entire dominion to so test whether Adam would remain faithful to God or not. God kept a small test in Garden of Eden. What did God say? You can eat freely of any tree in Garden of Eden, but of the knowledge of good and evil, Thou shall not eat. The day you eat thereof, what will happen? You shall surely die. God said. Huh? Correct now? Genesis 2.17. Yes, so, sure. why did God uh, put this small test? God could have just simply kept quiet. No? Nothing would have happened. Sin would have not entered. Why did God place it? Uh, that was a test to see their faithfulness. Imagine if you join a company on the day of joining, will our uh, uh, managing director give us uh, lakhs of rupees to go and deposit in the bank? No. Why? Because our faithfulness wouldn't have been tested. So until our faithfulness has been tested, they won't give so much responsibility. But here God gave the entire uh, earth, the entire garden of Eden to them <clears throat> to test whether they would remain faithful or not. God kept a small test, you see, and placed Lucifer as a guardian angel above these human beings, but gave the entire dominion to Adam and Eve. Imagine, dear brethren, Lucifer, who was a bright, huh? he was a morning star, could not humble him to such an extent to be a guardian angel, to be like a watchman, to be like a protecting angel. For Adam and Eve. They, they just knew. Entire authority is given to them. He was made the king. But he was made as their watchman. This, you see, developed pride in whom? In Lucifer. Imagine if we are a company manager. Now suddenly if a boss comes and tells that you are not going to be a manager from today, you are going to work as a watchman. How will we feel Daily seeing our boss going before our eyes and saluting him like a watchman, we will think uh, this fellow, you see, made us to such an extent uh, to be a watchman. So all sorts of evil thoughts will come, you see, to deceive, uh, you see, huh? and uh, do some evil. Same thought motivated uh, Lucifer also to sin against God. That is the time that Lucifer, you see, decided to deceive Adam and Eve. Read, brother. Isaiah 14, 13 and 14, brother. Huh? <clears throat> For thou hast said in thine heart, I will as ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the star of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Ah, I, I will be like the most high. Why should I be like a servant? Why should I be like a watchman? Instead of being a watchman, I will be like God. How God is above everything. Similarly, I will also be above God. So with this thought, he decided to deceive Adam and Eve. And bring them under his control so that he can become the king over them and they his servants. 
So how did uh, Satan deceive? Uh, he used the serpent to deceive Eve. We see in the Bible of Genesis 3, 1, which says uh, the serpent came and spoke to Eve. You see, how did the serpent speak? Many people tell, brother, those days serpents used to speak. Now it has become dumb. Yeah? Suddenly it will change. Uh. No. Serpent never speaks. But <clears throat> the action did by the serpent was like a speech to whom? To Eva. This is how, you see, God used. This is how the Satan deceived, you see, Eva. You see, dear brethren, uh, there is a problem. No? Action speaks louder than voice. You see, if he, a police tells to, uh, if he tells the hand like this, what is meaning? Stop. It is a sign language. So similarly, what uh, Satan did, uh, he would have made uh, Eve to eat the fruit. How, how would have tempted Eve? He would have first made the serpent to eat the fruit. And seeing this uh, serpent eating the fruit, immediately a thought would have generated in the mind of Eve. Why did God tell not to eat this fruit? This serpent is eating the fruit and uh, he is still alive. For this question in the mind of Eve, Again, Satan would have replied, you shall surely not die. Then again a thought would have come in uh, Eve's mind. Why? Well, what will happen? Huh? Then why did uh, God tell not to eat? So he would have replied, God fears that you will become like God. That is the way he would have replied to Abraham. So hence what happened? You see, this is the first question in the Bible. You know, the question mark, how do you put that? Uh, like the serpent's food. Why Why you use this question, this type of uh, sign, question mark, like a serpent's food? Because the first question came into the world because of the serpent. Serpent. Uh -huh. That is where it is given in the Bible. Therefore, you see, <coughs> Eve ate the fruit. He was totally deceived. But what about Adam? Was Adam deceived? Suraj Buddha, was Adam deceived? No, he is not. Then why did he eat? Maybe because of his wife. Very good. Correct, Buddha. Adam was not deceived. The Bible says, very good, Buddha. Read. First Timothy 2.14, Buddha. First Timothy 2.14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Hmm. Adam was not this. That means Adam knew very well that if you would eat, you would die. Then what did he eat? Ah? Adam knew now Eve has eaten the fruit and she will die. If she is going to die, he will remain alone. So he did not want to leave alone. So he actually committed suicide. You see, he actually he wanted to die with Eve. That's the reason, you see, he ate the fruit. Today, you know, even after so many girls are living in this world, some people will die for only the same girl. You see? Oh, I will leave. I love for you. You see? Romeo, Juliet, Laila, Majna, he runs now. Huh? Why? This is love story. This is the Bible's first love story. You see? Adam dying with Eve. Okay. <clears throat> but once they ate the fruit, what did God do? God cast them out of the Garden of Eden into the unfinished earth. You see, Genesis 3.17, God cast them into the unfinished earth. Uh, God cursed uh, the ground saying, uh, because of you, uh, the ground is cursed. He shall bring uh, thorns and thistle. You see, you shall eat by the sweat of thy bro all the days of thy life. Uh, you shall earn. You see, you should very, very hard working uh, you need to do. Dear brethren, therefore, he was sent out of Garden of Eden. And all this death, sickness, sorrow and everything is a result of that first sin which uh, Adam did. You know, today a lot of people are dying in, you see, uh, war than in uh, man-made, uh, you see, uh, disaster. Today man is dying more in man-made disasters than in natural disasters. War, fighting, you see. Today, you know, why wars take place? Huh? Because of small friction and misunderstanding. You know, the war between uh, Ukraine and Russia is more than one year, but still 
no, no waste of nuclear waste, totally destroyed. Even America was attacked by Bin Laden, you see, Taliban, why Afghans? Huh? You know who was Bin Laden? He was a CIA of America, but just because of small misunderstanding, he attacked America and huge war. Since the time the war is happening, happening, there is no control over it at all. Why? Because of man's selfishness. The earthquake happens. You can see in the news, Uttarakhand, North India, you see Himachal Pradesh, lot of earthquakes. Why? Because of excess mining. You see, excess mining eh? and a lot of floods. You see, tsunamis. Why? Because of deforestation. You cut down all the trees, uh, what will happen? You, every rains, if it comes, all the mud and everything will crash down into the place uh, as a form of uh, floods. Uh. You see, why all these things? This is all because of man's selfishness. You want more, not deforest. Want more, want more charcoal, dig, iron ore, all types of ore. Dear brethren, so uh, the, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, that uh, heaven is God's throne and earth is his footstool. So let us read Isaiah 66 1. Isaiah 66 1. Thus said the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye built unto me? And where is the place of my rest? Very good. So heaven is my throne, earth is a footstool. What does it mean? Does it mean that God is literally sitting in heaven keeping his foot on the earth, globe? No. First all in the Bible means a place of learning. See, in olden days, the teacher or the guru is to teach like this. They used to sit on a, you see, a higher uh, a platform. And there used to be a seat and they used to have a place where they used to keep their feet. And below alone, there was a footstool. And uh, in front of him only, all the pupils and students used to sit on the floor. So that place was called as a Guru Kul or Guru's feet. You see, it was called at the feet. I learned at this feet and his feet. Read, similarly, Apostle Paul, you see, learned at the footstool of Gamaliel, it seems. Read Acts 22.3. Acts 22.3. I am verily a man which am a Jew born in Tars Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in the city at the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was jealous towards God. And ye all are this day. Mm. Brought up in the city at the feet of Gamaliel. What does it mean, feet of Gamaliel? I learned at the feet of Gamaliel. Apostle Paul learned at the feet of Gamaliel. That doesn't mean that he was literally sitting his feet. It's a place of learning. Similarly, when God says that earth is my footstool, it means earth is a place of learning. That means, you see, whatever God wants to teach his creation, he's going to teach it from the earth teachings. See, for uh, teaching something to some people or somebody, there are actually four methods. And the first method is intuition. Intuition means there is no need for uh, somebody to tell this is good and this is bad. Automatically, they have this knowledge within themselves. This is intuition. This only God has. None other creation can clearly discern between good and evil. This quality only God is having. So for Adam to be taught, what is good and what is bad, this uh, method could never be applied because this quality only God is having. So next uh, way to teach evil is advice. You see, now God had uh, advised Adam not to eat uh, fruit uh, of the garden of Eden, but he ate it. You see, he had, he had advised. You see, advice was there, but advice did not work out. So this was a failure in Adam. And the third one is observation. Adam did not have anybody to observe and see this is evil. This is the result of sin and death. You see, he did not have anybody to observe. If he had anybody to observe, you wouldn't have definitely sinned. So observation also failed. But 
this observation is successfully working among the angels. See, there is no law among the angels, the wages of sin is death. But uh, how they are learning? What is the result of sin? Violating God's commands. How they are learning it? Uh, by seeing the sufferings among mankind. By seeing how God is dealing with mankind, they are learning it. Uh. Read 1 Corinthians 4 9, brother. 1 Corinthians 4 9. You have the Bible, brother, with you? Can you read? Uh, Suraj Bhattar, you have the Bible with you? Yes. Okay. First Corinthians 4 9. First Corinthians 4 9. First Corinthians 4 9. Okay. For I think that God had set forth us the apostles last as it were appointed to death for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to man ah we are made spectacle spectacle unto angels angels are seeing mankind and learning the wages of sin is death so therefore the third one failed it is working among the angels the last and the final one to teach what is evil was the only way that was left over, that was experience. And Adam sinned against God because he did not have experience with evil. He did not have experience what is good and what is bad. If he had experience, he wouldn't have definitely sinned. Dear brethren, just imagine, whenever you go for the interview, what do the people ask first thing? The first thing they ask is that experience. Why? Without experience, what will happen now? That will be a damage to the company. So experience is very, very important. And moreover, this experience is such a way that we can't infuse into somebody. No, we can't infuse. They have to get it by themselves, by undergoing it. You see, by experiencing it. That is called as experience. You see? So we can't put it into somebody's mind or body. My experience, you can't take it. Your experience, I can't take it. So Adam sinned against God because of lack of experience and God saw as Adam has sinned because of lack of experience similarly his entire ch children entire generation will sin because of lack of experience with evil therefore God permitted evil not only in Adam but that in Adam everybody should experience evil why to gain that experience in Adam Read Romans 5.12, brother. Romans 5.12. Um. Romans 5, which you said, sir. Mm. 5.12. Mm. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Ah, wherefore, as by one man, one man sin entered into the world, and death the by sin. And so what happened? This death passed upon everybody. You see, because only one man. One man sinned and uh, death came into the world. But what did God do? He permitted everybody to die in Adam because of lack of experience. Their children also will sin because of lack of experience. Therefore, in 1 Corinthians 15, 22, what does he say? As in Adam, all die. Even in Christ, all shall be made alive. As in Adam, all die. All are dying in Adam. Everybody are dying in Adam. <clears throat> so, dear brethren, you see, we are all facing the consequences of the first sin. Read Jeremiah, 31st chapter, 29 and 30, brother. In those days, they, they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on age. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eaten the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on age. Very clearly it says now. Huh? Now what has happened? The fathers, God and Eden, Father Adam made the grape, our teeth were set on the age. We all are receiving the penalty, sin, because of his uh, sin and death. Uh, you see? Therefore, what is say? Uh, everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Now everybody is dying for the iniquity of Father Adam. 
but in the future it won't be so dear brother and therefore no why did god not forgive that could have forgive adam no at first sin no very simple no very so one small fruit what happened so many fruits are there no <coughs> god could have forgive adam but why did god not forgive adam <coughs> you see why <coughs> why because if god would have forgived adam you know what would have happened then the lie which the devil told that you shall surely not die that would have come true and moreover adam's faith on god would have lacked he would have trusted more on the devil than on god and third thing if adam was forgiven tomorrow the children also will commit some sin and come and stand before god lord forgive me if god says no i can't forgive you then they will question god you forgive my father adam no for first sin is no first sin forgive it no so if each and every commit sin where will be the justice and value of god then god would be a liar and say that would be true that is the reason god did not spare the first sin but he committed everybody to sin and death so everybody are dying in adam so what is the use what is the benefit of it so usually every poison has an antidote you see very you go to any place and you buy any chemicals or deadly poisonous thing behind this poisonous thing uh, you see they would have put a chemical label antidote so what is the meaning of that antidote you know antidote is a medicine which is used to nullify the effect of poison so similarly when god permitted the sea will in this world he had a an antidote in his hand uh, that antidote is none other than our lord jesus christ so god knew that the whole world had to suffer sin and death and experience it so he decided first only even before creating adam that jesus should die for everybody read revelation 13:8 <clears throat> revelation 13:8 and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world slain from the foundation of the world you see the lamb slain from the foundation of the world when the foundation was there lucifer was with jesus sir. they both sang together they were very happy no sin but even then god had decided in his mind that uh, once this poison comes i should sacrifice jesus uh, so it was already decided here brethren therefore the bible says that god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son jesus why to save everybody so huh eh? so what is the result of it what is the name of the fruit which uh, uh, eve and adam ate in garden of eden what was the name of the what was the name of the fruit uh, suraj brother which they ate in garden of eden apple or mango what was the name suraj brother you there suraj brother you there uh, suraj brother you there yes sir a little bit internet problem sir okay okay yeah okay now tell me what is the name of the fruit which adam ate in garden of eden that a knowledge of good and evil very good a knowledge of good and evil so why did god ever keep this name have you ever thought the entire subject is there in the fruit's name only brother you know what is the meaning of good and evil you see the good portion the good experience and also the bad experience today the entire mankind are eating the bad portion of the fruit that means they experience only evil and bad through whom through adam for more than 6000 years dear brethren through whom through adam so that uh, that uh, good and evil that evil portion is now eaten completely but when will that the good portion be ate that is also there no when that will be experienced that will be experienced when our lord jesus returns a second coming the bible says that he is going to rule on this earth for a thousand years and in his period in his kingdom everybody will experience good only good will be there there won't be any evil at all 
So Jesus will bind Satan and he will be good all over the world. You see, so every man can shall experience this good. Now they are as they are experiencing now evil. Read Psalms 30 verse 5. <clears throat> Uh, read from the Bible, brother. Psalms 30, verse 5. Psalms 30, verse 5. Surah, brother, you there? Bible, can you open and read? Yeah, yes, sir. <clears throat> For his anger endured but a moment in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Ah, you see, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Which is his night? Which is his morning? The night of sin, sorrow, sufferings. Uh, this night of 6,000 years, that is uh, night. But it will be only for a night. What comes in the morning? Joy. Morning. When Jesus will arise as a son of righteousness, Malachi 4.2, he will heal everybody in his kingdom. So, what will happen at that time? Only joy, joy, joy. Weeping are there now, but in his kingdom there won't be tears at all. Revelation 21.4, brother. And God shall weep away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. See, for the former things have passed away. No more tears, no more crying, no more death. You see, this is the kingdom which Jesus preached all the places. Matthew 9.35, Luke 4.43. It says, Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness. Luke 4 43 it says, uh, You see, huh? therefore I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities. This reason I am sent, I have been sent to this earth to preach the kingdom. You see, then what will happen? The feet of God shall be made glorious. Which is the feet of God? The earth. The earth will be restored back uh, to the original condition. Read Isaiah 60, verse 13. Brother. Huh? Isaiah 60, 13. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beauty the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. I will make the place of my feet glorious, dear brethren. So, <clears throat> you see, now let me ask a question. Now, why did God permit first evil and then at the Christ return is going to permit good. Why did not God do it the other way? Why not permit first good, then permit evil? Why did not God do like this one? Why did he permit evil first and then good? Why, brother? Why do you think? What's your thought? Because God wants to make good why God permitted evil first? No, no, no sir. <laughs> ah, let us see. You see, why you no? Know? Because mankind had lot of experience. I'll tell you, give an example. See, smoking. <clears throat> Is smoking good or bad, brother? Suresh, brother. Smoking yes, is good or bad? Good, very good. Sorry. It's bad. It's, it's not supposed to smoke. So, intuition. There are four methods to teach, no? So first thing is intuition. How many people have the natural common sense not to smoke? Not many. So this one won't work out. Second, advice. Each and every cigarette pack, they would have put a label. Now color photo will come. That cigarette smoking, you should not smoke. It is dangerous. It's very harmful for you. You see? But how many people uh, hear this advice? Nobody. Then third method, observation. If it takes so people that uh, cigarette smoking people to cancer hospital, huh? some people will observe it and learn. Oh, very dangerous. Oh, let us quit it. 
but simple some people no they will tell i my grandfather is been smoking nothing will happen to me so observation also some people it won't work out but ultimately the last one experience will definitely work out you know why ha huh? even after a lot of observation advice they kept on smoking and if they develop cancer and after operation if they are cured lot of pain they would have undergone and then now totally cured imagine for such a patient if you go and offer crores and crores of rupee and tell them to smoke only one cigarette will they smoke will they smoke suraj brother no sir no why experience this is the experience which god wants everybody to gain in adam so therefore first evil is permitted then what is permitted good got it brother so first why god permitted evil so at mankind and in adam everybody can gain that experience of evil okay so when christ comes and good is permitted everybody can differentiate between good and evil and then choose the you see good that is the reason why god has permitted evil for experience read romans 8 20 and 21 brother read slowly we we'll go one by one one by one and we'll go and see slowly you can read uh. for the creature was made subject to vanity uh, you see one minute brother for the creature was made subject to vanity vanity means what in ecclesiastes we get no vanity 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 everything is vanity so it is speaking about the experience the creature was made subject to experience vanity why continue ha huh? not willingly not willingly by... not willingly yo they should suffer yo they should undergo no 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 not willingly not compulsorily not purposefully but continue ha huh? but by the reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope ha ah, but by the reason of him who subjected this who was permitted this one in a hope god had a plan that is the reason it was permitted this him what is his plan continue hmm because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of god what will happen in the future you see the creature the whole world shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption sin sickness death they shall all become god's children having this beautiful experience of evil and good that is the reason you see evil was permitted okay so this is the class i'll send the notes please go to the notes i'll send a youtube link please listen to the classes any doubts any questions you have you can ask any questions uh, brother suraj 